Greetings to you all in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Allow me to give thanks to you, especially the organizers, for giving me the opportunity to come today and worship with you. And at the same time, learn the word of God together. I want to thank Pastor Perez for your great support, for your great work. I want to thank all of you for joining our worship today. I want to thank Leah Nankumba. Thank you for the warm introduction. Thank you for the smile. I don't know what drugs you are on, but I appreciate you are always smiling regardless. God bless you indeed and all of you. I do want to thank the dedication, the, the dedicated services to our English worshipers in the Ugama family. Thank you very much for the hard work you have continued to do with love and care. I thank all of you for coming continuously from all over the world and you care that we get together and worship our God. The Bible promised to us blessings regardless of numbers. So let us not be uh, afraid to continue with our worship regardless. Two or three is all he mentioned. When there are two or three of you, I will be among you. May God bless you. I do want to thank you for the Adventist mission that we have shared, the story of the bikers coming together. What a lesson. All the hundreds of books that were shared free. All the bikers, motor bikers who came from all over and were able to see and feel the presence of God. Thank you. I, I learned quite a bit of things throughout this worship. We all can make a difference in the lives of people who are around us. You don't have to be a good speaker. You don't have to be wealthy, educated, or whatever. All you have to be is willing to be used by God. Sharing that light like Leia Nankumba does, that scatters fear. You don't have to be anything special. But with his help, you too can make a difference. I love the message within that. We should probably have continued with that kind of music, close our worship and go home. But I do thank you that you have shared quite a few things that touched my heart also. Praise be to God. Let's pray. Our loving Father, thank you for allowing your children to gather here today to come and worship you. Thank you for all the blessings you received throughout the week. Come and teach your word. We thank you for all that you have done for us. Draw us closer to you in all we want. Let us be able to see Jesus. In his name we pray. Amen. I appreciate if you respond where necessary because I want to know you are there and you can hear me. Um, it's amazing that when I was asked to come and worship with you, I chose a topic, enough cheese and crackers. What's amazing is all the messages that we have received from the music and from the from Brother Isaac Sekito. It is almost talking about 
what I'm going to be talking about today. Thank you for what you have shared, Isaac, Isaiah Sekito, in the key thought. There's nothing else we can do but to fear the Lord, keep his commandments, and give him the glory. If we can do those three, we are good. Secondly, I appreciate Isaiah Sekito for sharing using the word saints of the Lord. Yes, we are. We are his children if we believe and trust. So thank you. By confidence, go ahead. Count yourself in because you believe and trust in the Lord. The Laura story, song on blessings. Your mercy is come in disguise. Sometimes we, we doubt God's goodness. Sometimes we doubt his love. Sometimes trials blind us that we are, never, we are not able to see his mercies. Sometimes it is disappointment. Thank God that we have our Psalms 34, verse 8. Thank you, Catherine Nassali, for being a good reader. I hope you can read the Psalm sometimes again in Luganda. I hope we remember the words that Catherine read. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good, despite the disguise, despite disappointments, disapp dis despite trials. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. How blessed is a person who takes refuge in him. This verse brings to memory while I was in my early 20s, that's just a few years ago, my parents gave me an opportunity to go to study for my first degree in economics in India. That was in 1968. I took a train from Uganda, Kampala, at the train sta station. And I rode all the way to Mombasa, a trip I think is about 800 miles or 800 kilometers, to the coast of the Indian Ocean. This is where I boarded a huge ocean liner, carrying quite a few people. Over a thousand people were on that ship. A thousand passengers, luggages, and all trading stuff. The ship was traveling at four knots per hour. That's about six miles per hour those days. The journey took us 18 days. I was on that boat for 18 days, crossing the Indian Ocean from Mombasa to Bombay. And then from Bombay, I had to take a train, a train from Bombay to Maharashtra State, which was another some hundreds of miles away. For meals, everyone was expected to go to the cafeteria for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. That was a huge kitchen where everybody on board on board, went to be fed. My trip to India 
If you want to know more, by the way, and you can pay for the story, let me know, please. I'll share the rest of the story. I took a ship again after some time, and the, the boat by then was now reduced to 11 days. And I think now it's about five or six days it takes to sail from Bombay to Mombasa on the Indian Ocean. However, my trip to India reminds me of another intriguing story about a man who traveled across the Atlantic Ocean on a cruise ship, but never ate in the dining room with other passengers. Instead, he would go off in the corner and eat cheese and crackers. He had brought these with him on the trip from his house as a way to manage the couple of days that he was going to stay on the cruise ship. Near the end of the trip, another passenger asked him, why don't you come? into the dining room to eat with us. Why are you always sitting in the corner eating cheese and crackers? The traveler was kind of embarrassed, but he replied, well, to tell you the truth, I had only enough money to buy the ticket. I don't have any extra to afford it eating in the dining. The other passenger in the cabin raised his eyebrow in surprise and he shook his head and said, Sir, don't you realize that the meals are included in the price of the ticket? Your meals have been paid for already. All you need to do is go out there in the dining and eat and feast as much as you want. Many people are in a similar situation today, like this naive traveler. They are missing out on God's best offer because they don't realize that the good things in life have already been paid for. And such people are surviving on cheese and crackers while God has made much more available to all of us. When we go through life with a weak mentality, a weak warm of the dust mentality, what can I do? Cars are going to run over me. Lawn mowers are going to run over me. I see quite a bit of snails in my yard. And so we should not have that kind of mentality. I am weak. I'm just a little warm. I am just crawling here in the dust. Human beings, children of God, who are created in his image, we should not have that kind of mentality. Thinking we are conditioned to eat more cheese and crackers. I want to bring you briefly, let us, brief, uh, let us review the birth of John the Baptist. As we read the story in Luke chapter 1. Verse 11, Zachariah and his wife Elizabeth were both righteous, like Isaiah Sekito called us, saints. They were both righteous before God, but both of them had no child, and so they prayed. They prayed so much that Elizabeth would go to the temple and pray and pray and faint. And sometimes 
the priest thought she was drunk. She was confused. She was crazy. Here goes the story. And there appeared to him an angel of the Lord standing the right side of the altar of incense. Luke chapter 1, verse 11. Verse 12. The career was troubled when he saw the angel, and fear fell upon him. Verse 13. Luke chapter 1. But the angel said to him, Don't be afraid, Zechariah, for your prayer has been heard, and your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son. And his name would be called John. Verse 14. You'll have joy and gladness because he will be filled with the Holy Spirit from his mother's womb. And Zechariah said to the angel, how sad, very sad indeed. With his own human eyes, he did not believe what God had said or what God had promised. Because he was feeding on, on cheese and crackers. And he said, how shall I know this? But if God is saying it, why worry? How shall I know this? In other words, how can this be? For I am old man, and my wife is advanced in years. What was he doing? He was doubting God's word. And the angel, verse 19. And the angel of the Lord answered him. The angel of God rebuked. Rebuked the career. Because he failed to believe The angel of the Lord told Gabriel, I mean, the angel of the Lord answered him, I am Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God. And who are you with this weak, warm mentality to say, how shall I know this? Gabriel tells him, I stand in the presence of God and I was sent to speak to you and to bring to you this good news. And behold, you'll be silent and unable to speak until the day that these things shall take place because you did not believe my word which will be fulfilled in their time. How sad. You and I sitting in the corner of this huge big ship and eating nothing but cheese and crackers. Yes, true. Zechariah and Elizabeth were up in age. Didn't God know this? And who are you to doubt God's promise? That's where that song, that song by Laura's story comes in. God's blessing, God's mercy always come in disguise, may come in disguise. And we end up doubting God's goodness. We end up doubting God's love. Trials may be 
the reason why we get the mercy in this guys. Trials may come, disappointments may come, but we don't have to doubt God because God knows everything. Maybe you came from a poor family as a young person. Maybe you don't have a lot of material possessions right now. Maybe you don't have all you need, you want, a need you, you want in life. That's okay. But the God we worship, the God we believe in, has prosperous plans ahead of you. Therefore, my challenge to all of us today is we should not allow that poverty image to become ingrained inside us. Don't be accustomed to living with the less, doing less, and believing less, and think that the picture you are made in created in. No. You and I, let's start looking through the eyes of faith. Seeing ourselves rising to new levels that God has planned for you and for me. We need to see ourselves prospering and keeping that image in our hearts, in our minds, Trusting God. Yes, you may be living in poverty. It might be for a moment. But let us not allow poverty to live in us. You may be living in poverty at the moment. But don't, let, don't ever let poverty live in you. The Bible clearly shows that God takes pleasure in prospering his children. As we read in Philippians 4.19, My God will supply all your needs according to his riches in glory in Jesus Christ. How big is God's riches? You think your God can only afford cheese and crackers? Enough of that. Let's all go from here knowing God has promised to withhold nothing. He will give us everything. Those who believe and trust Jesus Christ. God is honored. God is pleased when we stop eating cheese and crackers. God is pleased. God is honored when we develop a prosperous mind state. God wants to supply every need that you and me have. And he will. And he is able. Is capable. It is therefore time for you and me to step up to God's dining table and dig into the fabulous banquet. This is the banquet that he has prepared for you completely with everything good, everything imaginable. I was fortunate when again I came in this country some years back. I was selected to be elected to be a member of the Colorado Educators Association Board. And that did not stop there. Every state, National Education Association comes together 
hundreds of thousands of educators coming together in a football stadium. And uh, we would uh, wake up and go different sports for breakfast. Hundreds and thousands of people. Each state sat in its place. The state of Colorado, state of Florida, state of uh, uh, Georgia, and so on and so on. Texas, California. Hundreds and thousands of people. They are wonderful. Wonderful breakfast. Wonderful orange juice. Wonderful apple juice. All kinds of juices. Tea, coffee, nuts, eggs. And those who are not politically savvy, we were taken by surprise to go to this place where there was everything to eat, fruits. Those who are politically ready to, they were busy campaigning, talking to each other. For me, I didn't know very many people, so the banquet took my eyes. The next thing I found myself sleeping in the meeting because my eyes and attention was on the big grand banquet. God has everything for your need. Whether it is joy, whether it's forgiveness, whether it is restoration, whether it is peace, whether it is healing, or anything that we need to live to your full potential, God has provision for that. All these and more are waiting at God's banquet table. But you need to pull up your chair and take the place that he has prepared for you. Best of all, the price has already been paid with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Remember, you're a child of God, and he wants you to enjoy what he has prepared for you. My friends, stop eating cheese and crackers in the corner. Just because something didn't work out for you, just because something did not work the way you wanted it, the time you wanted it, just because somebody disappointed you, that should not change who you are. You are God's child. According to the gospel of Isaiah Sekito, you are saying, praise be to God. I therefore challenge and ask each one of you, including myself, to ask God today to help us develop a biblically accurate, prosperous mindset. Ask God to help you and me to develop a biblically accurate, prosperous mindset and walk into it every day. Sometime I walk on the streets in Atlanta or oh, I remember even so in Denver, there was a street where no cars were not allowed. And I could see some black people walking and crushing all the rocks and turning around. This is the ground my four parents paid for. I own this land. Walk as if you are the only one who counts before God. Have that prosperous mindset. God sees it. Challenges at work. Challenges because of health. 
challenges spiritually, let's believe in God. Let's go to him in prayer, whether it is early in the morning, whether it's at night, whether it's in the evening. Let's go to him in prayer, mention it to him. And remember, King's David challenge, test and see that the Lord is good. May God bless you. Amen. Amen. Let's Amen. pray. Let's pray. Father, we know and we now realize that we have been existing on cheese and crackers while you have a delicious banquet prepared for us. And it is interesting to know that the price has already been paid. Paid with the blood of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father, for blessing us today. Thank you that you have better things in store for us than we would even choose for ourselves. Help us to better understand your grace and your goodness. And let, take, let us take our places at your banquet table. Thank you for renewing our minds and giving us a fresh new attitude of hope. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.